it's time to clear the shelves and do another unhaul. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brianna and this is Four Paws in a Book. I make bookish videos over here on my little corner of the internet so if that's something that you're interested in make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Today I have my quarterly unhaul. I like to clear my shelves every few months and really go through them, look at what I am or am not going to read. I do have a very unrealistic goal of getting my TBR down, preferably to under 200. <laughs> After a polycon we were closer to 300 and so this this round of my unhaul was a little bit brutal. <laughs> I am back down to around 250 after this unhaul and after um, June's pretty impressive number. <laughs> I read 14 books that came off of my physical TBR um, and then I'm unhauling roughly like 30 something I believe and then I've also made the decision to take off any SMP titles off of my physical TBR number because at this point it's unfair to keep that number on there when when I'm not reading the books. Because of the St. Martin's boycott, we are not publicly reviewing any of the books. And at this point in my booktube career, I'm not reading anything that isn't for content. I don't have time to read a book that I can't talk about. So I'm just taking them off of my physical TBR. There were only like four, so it's not that big of a deal. And then if and when the St. Martin's boycott ever resolves and ends, then um, I will put them back on the TBR. But for now, we're going to take them off because it's just it's not fair. I have 61 books that I am unhauling today, which is a lot. But I went through my shelves and I really thought about it. I was like, am I going to read this? Is this something that um, like I'm going to want that I want to read in the next say year? Um, and like the answer for a lot of them is no. I probably could have done another pass, but I think this is good for quarter two. We'll do another one in the fall. I'm gonna start with some special editions that I have that I am going to be getting rid of. First off, Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mahanti. I want to want to read this one, but I have a feeling that I am too dumb for this book. <laughs> Um, I feel like it's going to be a little bit dry. I think it's going to be like very expansive and it's, like at least currently I do not have the brain space for that um, and I don't I just I don't it, it, it will end up being a middle of the road book. It has the beautiful sprayed edges. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition um, and someone else will enjoy it more than I do. I also really was only keeping it for an R fantasy bingo prompt but I found a different book for that so I'm going to be unhauling Reset and Preset. I read Reset during Amazing Readathon only gave it two stars and didn't really like it so I'm like I don't think I'm gonna even read the prequel. This is from the Unplugged book box I believe um, that I tried out their box like a year ago. It wasn't for me um, but the, the books are gorgeous. I mean like they have the sprayed edges like this. They have the like foiling here um, on the naked hardcover. I mean it's 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 gorgeous. The end pages look like that. Um, there's the side book plate in it. They're very pretty, but I didn't like this one, so I don't see myself wanting to read the second one. I have the Illumicrate edition of um, Goddess of the River by Vashini Batel. Uh, this is May's book, I believe, um, and this is the one that got switched out because of the whole author drama, um, and so I actually <laughs> was not paying attention and just didn't know what the book was going to be and I've read something else from this author before and it's just not my preferred writing style uh, so someone else will enjoy it. It is again beautiful sprayed edges, the end pages are gorgeous. Like Illumicrate does such such a good job with their editions. And then also I have Gothicana by Rue Nix. This is one with the beautiful purple sprayed edges. Um, this I think is like a dark academia of fairy tale retelling romance. I don't know. I've heard bad things about this book, but then I watched Rachel's video from Reads with Rachel and I'll have a link down below. But it was so bad. <laughs> like some of the like she she actually like put passages in it. And I was like, nope, don't want to read that. So um it's going. Okay, I have these all broken up by genre now. Um, so let's just get into it. Let's start with romance because it's right here. I have Irresistible Intern by Eliza Mann. I think I got this at a library sale. Um, it was an author that was originally going to a polycon. So I was going to do a taste test and then she ended up not doing it. Uh, at least I think I don't remember. So I was like, okay, well, I'm probably not going to read this anytime soon. Unhauling Hate by Tate James. I read this for the Can I Trust Crystal vlog and did not love it. 
so doesn't need to stay on my shelf. Unhauling Technically Yours by Denise Williams. This is a book that I read during Amazing Readathon and it was fine, but I am slowly running out of room on my romance shelf. So uh, it's getting to the point where these, this like rainbow shelf needs to be four and five star reads. I am unhauling A Savage City by L. Penelope. This is a fantasy romance. Um, it's, I think a YA fantasy romance. It just didn't quite hit the mark for me. Didn't quite hit what I wanted, um, but I know that someone else will absolutely love it. I am unhauling the Twisted series. Um, okay, here's the thing. I read this one first, even though it's the third book. I read it for a Goodreads Choice Awards. Then I DNF'd this one. And so then why do I want this one? I mean, this book was only three stars and I've just, I've kept them on my shelf for so long. And uh, I don't, they, they take up a lot of space. I don't need to do that. I'm unhauling Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver simply because I would prefer having the paperback edition of it. So I will trade this one out. And then when I see the Butcher and Blackbird in paperback on Pango, I will just, you know, buy it there. And it's just kind of like a trade. And then I'm going to be unhauling The Rewind by Alison Wynn Scotch. This is like, uh, I think it's more of a contemporary story. And it came up as an option for the Amazing Readathon. It was like one of the ones that I was picking for my poll picks. And I did not want to read it. I was like really hoping that nobody picked it, which like it didn't win. Uh, but that kind of told me that like, I was like, I don't actually want to keep this. <laughs> That's it for the romance. But I do have some like contemporary and historical fiction. Those are the ones that I think probably got the most you know, culling as it were, um, just because I have come to the realization that that's not a genre that I read anymore and that's okay. I did read A New Kid during Amazing Readathon. I'm going to put it in the little free li library that's right down the street. It's right by a middle school. So, um, somebody else will find a, um, you know, a lot of use out of it. I'm Unhauling Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. I read this one a couple of years ago and I enjoyed it. I think it did what it was supposed to do, but like I'm not going to reread it and it's not a book that I am necessarily going to like continue to recommend. So I don't need it on my shelf. Two books that I'm going to be giving to my niece because she's like in the perfect age range for these, these books. Um, Fake Dates and Mooncakes by Cher Lee, uh, Young Adult Contemporary Queer Romance, and then Blackout by um, Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas. Ashley Woodfolk and Nicole Yoon that she will get more use out of it because this is like her target age range. They don't need to stay on my shelf. They were three star reads for me. Um, I'm unhauling Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. This was a book that I was going to try to get to for Amazing Readathon um, when I was on the historical fiction team. It's about like a historical circus which like theoretically sounds interesting but I can't think of a time where I will pick this book up for any type of content. Yeah, it's uh, the, the audiobook is on Everand and Hoopla if I want it. So a couple of books that I did read during the my time on the general fiction team, Shark Heart by um, Emily Habick and Cassandra in Reverse by Holly Small. These were both three, three and a half star reads. Um, so someone else will enjoy them. The Wicked Widow by Beatrice Williams. This was giving like Evelyn Hugo vibes, like rich woman who has, you know, husbands are a problem kind of thing. I picked it up at like a bargain discount thing, uh, like at my grocery store, I think. It was like five bucks. Uh, but then I found out it was actually book three in a series. So couldn't actually read it. All right, last two on the contemporaries. We have Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour um, and then Transcendent Kingdom by Yaji Yassi. I actually have read this one. I really enjoyed it. I just won't reread it and so it doesn't need to sit on my shelf. And this one has been on so many TBRs and I've just never actually like picked it up and read it. It doesn't need to stay. Okay, let's do some sci-fi. Um, I'm gonna put this in my little free library. I read this during Face Off weekend, um, but it's not something that I need to keep. Either Bound by um, E.K. Johnston. This I DNF'd during Face Off weekend. I got like 10% in and did not like it at all. Um, so it's going away. Loki Journey into a Mystery. I read this during the Loki vlog and was sorely disappointed by it. So it's also going away. <laughs> uh, Persephone Station by um, Stina Light. This I, I've he I've heard nothing about, honestly. I picked this up to buddy read with somebody uh, who's no longer on booktube. Like we picked it up years ago. Um, and it's just, it hasn't been something that I have been drawn to. Like, honestly, I don't, it's like a space opera. I don't know. This could be one where like, I would be like, okay, maybe I'll keep this one. If you, if someone out there like really thinks that I should read this and love it, but like I said, I've never heard anybody talk about it. Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This I've heard that like on its own is not great. You have to read all three together. And I just don't love that as a concept of a book. Like you should be able to read one book and feel 
like it should be a complete story uh, and I have a feeling that Jeff Vandermeer is just not going to be the author for me. Uh, and then The Surviving Sky by Kritka H. Rao. I read this during a try a chapter tag that actually never saw the light of day um, several months ago. I was like mildly interested in it after the first chapter but not super intrigued and then there were a few people that read this during Amazing Readathon that did not like it um, that I trust their opinions on and so I am <laughs> I don't think I'll like this. I think it's going to be too slow. And then The Archive Undying by Emma Miko Kandon. Uh, you have not seen the vlog yet, but I've actually DNF'd this book. Um, this That vlog should be coming out like next, I think. And I just did not vibe with this writing style. I got to about 20%, like maybe about 100 pages in. And uh, yeah, I just, I was not vibing with it. So it's fine. All right, let's move on to my thrillers and horrors. All three of these horrors I've read. Um, I, they just don't need to stay on my shelves. Uh, we Spread by Ian Reid. Honestly, couldn't tell you what this book is about. I read it. I read it last year, but I could not tell you what this book is about. It was so mid. And then The Mary Spencer by Daniel M. Lavery. I read this one during Amazing Readathon, and it was fine. Um, but like, it's gotten to the point again where like three star reads cannot stay on my shelves. And then we have A When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen. I did enjoy this one. I read this one during a Scatagorathon round, I think. Um, but it's just not. It's not something I'm going to reread, and so I don't need to keep it. I have a couple of St. Martin's Press titles that are going to be on my panko shop that I'm not going to talk about. I have Their Vicious Games by Joelle Wellington. We read this one for the Accidental Book Club, I think back in May, and it was fine. It was fine. I don't need to keep it. Darling by Kate Ingram. I actually read this one years ago, and I enjoyed it, but I have kept it on my shelf for so long, and I don't know why. Um, but I read this one back in like 2021, I think. I really want to say I read it for the first Olympics of Thon, um, which would have been Tokyo. And we are now in the next cycle of the Olympics. So um, I haven't touched it since then. So I don't need to keep it. The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. The only reason I am getting rid of this one is because they did not do the next two in hardcover. This is a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. I don't think it has anything special other than like it is just a hardcover. Um, I got this one during the 50% off sale or the like whatever the end of year sale that Barnes & Noble does. But at that time I really didn't know that I was going to like her books and so I just swapped this one out for a um, paperback so that all of them matched. Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. I read this one last year I think and it, it was fine. It was fine. It was perfectly fine. But I hate the fact that the sequel does not match the original cover. And so I didn't even pick up the second one <laughs> physically because they don't match. I'm weird like that. I'm sorry. But it is what it is. My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon. I, I think I got this one in Book of the Month simply so that I could get an add-on. It wasn't something that I was super in, intrigued by. Um, so I like it, it will end up sitting on my shelf for two years if I just let it go up there. And Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully. I know that this will be great. I know that someone will really, really love it. I've just found that like YA that's not fantasy and even some YA fantasy I'm not picking up and so there's no reason for this to sit on my shelf when somebody else will enjoy it a lot more. Now I think we're on to the fantasy. That is the biggest section actually, uh, which is weird. Listen, listen, I was like, am I going to read this? No, I'm not. City of Nightmares by um, Rebecca Schaefer. Kristen from Kristen Craves Books read this during Amazing Readathon and was like, it's fine. And everything that she was saying about it was like, I also would say that it was fine. So I'm not going to waste my time. Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. I did read this one, but it's taken me two years to read the second one. I still haven't read it. Um, and I know the third one is coming out soon. Middle grade is just not something that's calling to me. I think I have one middle grade left on my TBR and I'm only keeping it because it's Django Wexler. Uh, everything else I have let go. So this is this was the holdout. While I'm on the middle grade train, um, Healer of the Water Mon Monster by Brian Young is also a middle grade fantasy, more like folklore than fantasy, but I didn't know where to put it, so we're putting it here. I picked this one up for a readathon, and then I didn't end up reading it, so uh, someone else will enjoy this a lot more than I will. Witch King by Martha Wells. I have not heard anything good about this book, like not a single thing. I have the ebook copy because I got it as an arc. So I don't need to have it physically as well. <laughs> I'm unhauling In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland, but only because I was able to find the pretty Illumicrate version on Panko. So I, I don't need the regular copy when I have this one. That was nice and 
convenient right there. For the same reason, I am unhauling a dragon fruit by Makia Lucier because I found a bookshop that did um, custom sprayed edges. And so I got that one instead. Honestly, this was only like a three and a half star book for me, but I'm keeping the pretty sprayed edges one for right now. <laughs> Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. I am unhauling. I I don't think I'm gonna like this. I'm sorry. I don't think I am. If I do, I can find it on Libby or like Kindle. How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying by Django Wexler. I dean up this book like 100 pages in. And he, listen, I meant to take this back to Amazon and then forgot about it because I was in the middle of the Amazing Readathon and like my brain was just not there. So now we're just putting it on Pango because the Amazon return window expired. It's fine. The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. I think I actually unhauled this one previously, but somehow it ended back up in my shelf. So now we are actually unhauling it. <laughs> Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Graves. This is a book that I read for Spiffbo 9, um, like the last one. This was one of the finalists and uh, did not like it. Nobody in our group liked it. It was, yeah, the writing style was just not there. Like it has a, a lot of promise. The concept is really interesting. The execution was not there. And then Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. If you watched my Can I Trust My Nicole vlog, this was the only book that I owned in that series uh, or in those three books that I read. Um, and I only gave it three stars, so I don't need to keep it on my shelf. Listen, my fantasy shelf is also shrinking by the day. So um, I can get rid of anything that I don't love. Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. This is one that I'm so curious about. I'm intrigued by because the concept sounds interesting, but I know it's going to be a mid book for me. I did not like These Violent Delights. Like I think I probably gave it three and a half stars, but I was probably slightly bullied into that. Um, not like by anyone specifically, <laughs> just that I was still a kind of baby booktuber and didn't want to rock the boat with a popular book to book. I didn't love the writing style so like I'm not gonna love this either. A couple of YA fantasies that I am gonna unhaul that I just um I don't know I don't I don't see myself getting to them anytime. This Vicious Grace by Emily Thee. This was actually on my self-destruct list I think for the year so we're just self-destructing early. There's actually a couple of books on here that are that. And then we have Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. Um I think that this book is just gonna be too young for me. Uh the from what I've seen of reviews people have been saying that it's kind of younger YA um, like it's dark but it's not I don't know like just not mature enough for what I'm looking for in books which is not a problem I'm not the target audience for it when I have over 250 books on my shelf that I still need to read I have to be picky and that's okay. Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Torres. I don't I don't know I know that this one's probably gonna hurt a couple of people because I know that some people really love this one. The concept just does not intrigue me anymore. Then we have The Night Ship by uh, Jess Kidd. I guess I could have put this one in the special editions because it has this pretty sprayed edges. Uh, this one I think is actually more historical than it is fantasy which already scares me. I've just like historical fantasy in general is not my cup of tea um, and when it's like less fantasy than historical fiction. Here's the thing. These books might be amazing. Um, they might be fantastic, but like I said, 250 something books and I'm only reading books for content at this point. Sometimes when I'm really excited about a book, I can make content around it. But for the most part, I'm thinking about the content and then make and then finding the books that fit it. Like if I can't think of content for something, then it's just gonna sit on my shelf and why would I do that? All right last three Age of Ash by Daniel Abram Abraham uh this is also on my self-destruct list. I think I got this one on a whim because it was 50% off and I was like this sounds interesting. Um again I, I just do not see myself picking this up and I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of dude bro-ish. This one's gonna hurt a lot of people. The Will of the Mini by James Eilington. I read this one during Ramathon and I didn't love it. <laughs> I didn't love it. I liked the ending um, and like I was like the ending caused me to want to continue slightly but I didn't love the entirety of the book so this was like a three star and um, I don't I, I don't think I'm gonna continue reading so uh, I'm happy for all of you that love this book because all of booktube loves this book. You can have my copy if you want. Lastly um, A Sweet Sting, Sting of Salt by Rose Sutherland. This was an aardvark book uh, that I had no idea what it was about. Um, I think it's like this, the, the oh it's signed. I think it's a retelling of the Selkie Wife but I've just heard that it's a lot more historical than it is fantasy um, and it's like more gothic and that's just unfortunately anti-buzzwords for me. 
So uh, these books are leaving my shelves. Maybe they will go onto your shelves. I do have my Pango shop listed down below in the description. Um, and then when this video comes out publicly, um, there will be a 20% off sale for one week. So you can go and uh, check that out if you want any of these books. Not all of them will be there because obviously I'm posting these a couple of days before I post the video and also my patrons get early access to the videos. What's left is all up for grabs. That's all I have for you today. If you're new here and you have not yet subscribed, there's a little button that you can do so down below the video. If you'd like to hang out with me more, the links to my Instagram, Goodreads, Twitter, and my Patreon are linked in the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!